Hey guys, Claire Hare, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. How adorable is this custom art of Harry and Meghan at the polo match? In the last video, we talked about, well, a lot of things, but one of the things we discussed were the two first recipients of Meghan's champs. That was Delphina and Tracy. And since the last video, we discovered three more. The first is Megan's friend Kelly, who we will talk about later on in the video. And not only did she share a photo, she shared a video. The other recipient is Mindy Kaling. Not surprised, Mindy was a guest on Megan's Archetypes with Megan podcast and recently shared some selfies that she took with Prince Harry at the Better Up event. And the third is none other than the daughter of the legendary Diana Ross. Tracy Ellis Ross, who I am a huge fan of, by the way. With Tracy, I'm not surprised because Tracy was also a part of Megan's 40th birthday campaign. I love that campaign, by the way, and I hope Megan continues to do something like that in the future. And not to be outdone by the ladies, we also saw photos shared by Harry's brother from another mother, Nacho, on Instagram, telling Megan how much he loves her jam and showing himself eating it. If it's one thing Nacho is gonna do is rep for Harry and Megan. I don't know about you guys, but I have never seen, heard, or thought about strawberry jam as much as I have in the past two weeks. I feel like <laughs> there are so many articles and conversations and photos about American Riviera jam. It's insane. For the most part, I have seen nothing but positive and excited commentary about it from the US media. The UK media, oh child, it's a mess. But what else is new? In the beginning, I saw uh, articles about people who make jams <laughs> offering advice to Megan, <laughs> which I was like, well, okay, that's nice. And that quickly turned into a hot mess because the UK press can't help themselves. Imagine making 50 jars of strawberry jam to send to 50 of your friends and you becoming front page news for days and people just losing it. Your impact, you know? But let's talk about Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex and how every time she literally breathes, the internet just loses it. And I'm just very confused why people who don't like her or like royalists or whatever they want to call themselves are thinking that her business, American Riviera Orchard, is not going to be incredibly successful because this woman literally just made 50 jars of jam. She probably just went out the garden, picked up some strawberries and preserved them like everyone does, 50 jars of jam, and sent it to her friends with some lemons. And I have not stopped hearing talk of jams for the past like two and a half days. And you're telling me that's not gonna sell? Okay, be so for real, <laughs> be so for real. She wore um, this beautiful white dress to the polo match. She looked insane, she looked incredible. That dress is expensive as all heck. Sold out in seconds, sold out in seconds. She literally sold out, okay, okay. We got images of the back of her dress. We haven't even seen the front, the back of her dress. Okay, she was giving all sorts of, hello, my tone back. Hello, I know I'm fine, okay? Harry was over there and literally had to like swallow up the, the drool coming out of his mouth because that man is so in love with that woman. We saw the back of the dress. Dress sold out. <laughs> I don't even know what the front of the dress looks like on her. Sold out. And so you're telling me that what she's gonna put up isn't gonna sell out? That's how I know some of y'all are delusional. Delusional indeed. While I was trying to get all my screenshots together to start the recording and editing process of this video, the Instagram page of American Riviera Orchard was at 604K, right? 604,000 followers. And now I just look and it's at 607K. And the numbers keep rising. In the meantime, Megan has said nothing and has not officially launched any products. So there you have it. There was even an article, was it from She Knows, <laughs> where the writer admitted that she has never seen so many of her fellow writers in that space thinking about and talking about and looking into Jam and trying to figure out who the remaining people are from that batch of 50. I have my guesses on a few. I think Serena's in there. I think Abigail Spencer is in there. Maybe 
Ellen and Portia is in there, Oprah, and I know that Lily's godfather, Tyler Perry, has gotten some jam. You guys let me know. What are your guesses? There was even an article done that talked about the increase in Google searches for jams, or was it strawberry jams? I'll see if I can get that screenshot and add it into the video. The influence of the Duchess of Sussex and amongst the multitude of insane hot takes from the UK tabloids, we have the Express doing what the Express has been doing for years now. This time around, apparently royal fans refuse to buy Meghan Markle's strawberry jam, but it eventually goes on sale. Do we have a poll or articles saying that they wouldn't read Prince Harry's book? And didn't they say that royal fans would be leaving Netflix because they're not interested in watching the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary? And that turned out to be Netflix's top documentary? So who knows? <laughs> Maybe this time they'll stick to the guns and not buy Megan's jam when it comes on sale, but I highly doubt it. And speaking of Prince Harry's book Spare, there was a few articles in which the author, Richard Osman, did a detailed insight into the windfall payment that Prince Harry would receive for his memoir Spare. And in other Spare news, the 2024 British Book Award has shortlisted Prince Harry Spare for Book of the Year nonfiction. Congratulations to Prince Harry. But surely this must be a mistake because remember, the Express told us that royal fans in the UK were not interested in Spare. So I don't know how it could be shortlisted for the book of the year for the British Book Awards. It must be a mistake. And in other positive news for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, AP has selected Prince Harry playing polo in his Santa Ballet polo match as a AP week in pictures for North America. Also another photo of the Duchess of Sussex with the tennis legend Serena for AP Week in Pictures Global. And in today's episode of Until You Do Right by Megan, GP News is to ax 40 jobs weeks after revealing heavy losses. So let's recap, shall we? Piersy is no longer on his show, and now he's a YouTuber. Danny Boy is also axed from his show and is now on YouTube. The Talk TV is now on YouTube or will be 100% on YouTube and no longer on the main screen. So there's that. And now GP News is to ax 40 jobs. Like I said, until you do right. And there's also even more good news for Prince Harry this week. The Sun publisher lost its bid to push back the full trial of legal challenges. Prince Harry has won his latest round of high court legal battle with the Sun. The mission continues. We also saw some really cute photos of Duchess Meghan with her friends Kelly and Abigail supporting the Alliance of Moms. Alliance of Moms is founded by Meghan's friend Kelly McKee. Oh god, I'm gonna butcher her last name. I'm just gonna call her Kelly McKee. But it is a charity that supports foster care. And this is not the first, and I'm doubting the last time that Meghan will be supporting this particular charity. It's really sweet. And for those royal fans who love to say, well, Meghan has no relationships with her friends from Suits. Abigail is also a former co-worker from Suits. So, yeah. And in another installment of royal fans going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to Meghan, apparently a fan of Kate Middleton hijacked or created a website using an American Riviera Orchard UK domain name and attempted to raise donations for, for one of the charities. I may be wrong, but this sounds highly illegal. If it is, I hope that Megan pursues that because what the hell? And also, if you are a fan of Kate, why not just create a fundraiser in honor of Kate, in order of cancer awareness? And why not link it to a charity that is linked to Kate because when this came out publicly, the charity in question denied having any sort of relationship with this person or knowing anything about it. And they also made it clear that Kate is not their patron. And this is why I always wonder if a lot of these self-proclaimed royal fans and fans of William and Kate 
are even true fans because I don't understand why you feel the need to include Harry and Meghan in your nonsense. If you support Kate, why not just do that? That was one thing that I've noticed in the differences between supporters of Harry and Meghan and supporters of uh, the Waleses is that Harry and Meghan supporters have consistently raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities and organizations linked to Harry and Meghan. And they make it very clear, hey, we're raising money for um, this particular charity that is linked to Harry and Meghan, that have worked with Harry and Meghan in honor of their anniversary, in honor of their birthdays, in order of their children's birthdays. Just now, I know that it's going to be Prince Archie's birthday. And how do I know that? Not because I remembered it. Oh no, because members of the Sussex squad are gearing up for fundraising events in honor of Prince Archie's fifth birthday. See how that works? If you are inspired by a couple, you raise funds or you support them that way. I have never seen any Harry and Meghan fans raise funds using Kate or William's name or anything that is linked to them. And I also don't see Harry and Meghan fans attacking charities and organizations that work with William and Kate regardless of their feelings about William and Kate. On the other spectrum, I don't think there's one charity or organization that has worked with Harry and Meghan that have not been attacked on their social media platforms by royal fans, many of whom who has pictures of the Wales family and Kate in particular. It is bizarre to me. Are you a fan of them or are you just an obsessive hater of Meghan? Her business? American Riviera Orchard is not going to be incredibly successful. I'm here to make a point. I filmed that video about 24 hours ago. When I took a screenshot of American Riviera Orchard's Instagram, they had 600,000 followers. Today, they're at 604,000 followers. Do you see how hating Megan is lining her pockets? Okay, someone also just hijacked the like British um, web address. So American Riviera Orchard, uk and made it linked to like a charity that is associated with i think catherine or something like that do you see how megan is the reason why the current royals stay relevant cool um also today sales for dutchy i think it's like the jam brand that the king does like he makes jam too because it's okay for him to make jam but god forbid megan makes jam anyway his jams selling out selling out people are going on that website and boy are they buying some king's jam for, for what reason exactly because they hate megan do you see how no one in the british royal family is relevant until megan do you see how coming online and hating her and making your own fake bottles so that you can you know make fun of megan is only driving traffic to her brand this is a case study in marketing it's brilliant do you think it was a coincidence that she dropped all of that jam stuff right after polo no she knew that y'all would be all up in your bridges about what she was wearing so she's like might as well get some free promo i know that's right i know that's right do you think that we only saw the back of her dress on purpose you think we only saw the back of her dress because she didn't want to show she was no it's because they're literally filming the netflix polo documentary at that game and I don't know about you, but I'm going to watch when it drops so that I can see the front of the dress. <laughs> you guys are literally making someone you don't like more popular by not liking her. And at the same time, also proving that the relevance of the British royal family hangs solely on the neck of Meghan Markle. And as it relates to the jam situation, I remember seeing that article. And hours later, while I was browsing on social media, I would see comments from people saying, well, this article is inaccurate because they checked and none of the jams had sold out. So I was like, hmm, that's weird. So I decided to check myself. And sure enough, the jams were not sold out. And when I looked, none of them had sold out. So I found that to be a little odd. Like why write an article saying that something has sold out when it hasn't? Just saying, that's a little interesting. Also, in relation to what she said, I do agree that Megan's existence makes a lot of the British royal family far more relevant in today's pop culture. Because if it wasn't for the Harry and Meghan versus the firm narrative, that the palace and the UK press and some royal fans 
have been deeply engrossed in for the past few years, would people really be paying attention to the Bridgewater family in the way that they are right now? I would say no. It just breaks my heart that Harry and Meghan's mental health, mental well-being has been traded and vilified and they've been dehumanized for a popularity contest. Because at the end of the day, that's what it really is. I will never understand why members of the British royal family are so hyper-focused, or I shouldn't say members, I should say the heirs, Charles and William in particular, are so focused on popularity contests. Yes, it is imperative for the British monarchy to have public affection in order to maintain their existence. I get that. But why does someone have to be down for the other to be up? You're going to be king anyway. It's not necessary. It really isn't. So in order to get good press or to keep unsavory tidbits out of the press, you throw members of your family to the wolves. And at what cost? At what cost? So you can have some sort of popularity. And quite honestly, I don't think in the long run that it's really worked. I think for the most part, the person that has benefited from this entirely mostly has been Kate. Now for Camilla, I feel like some royalists are far more accepting of her now. But honestly, I think without all the scheming and backstabbing, she would have accomplished the same goal. Just go out and do whatever you're doing. You're married to the future king. You would have been the future queen consort anyway. And I feel like a lot of royalists are so emotionally invested in that structure that eventually in time, they would have accepted her the same way that they are now. People outside of the royal bubble still don't mess with Camilla. And that's never going to change. I feel overall, the person who has benefited the most has been Kate. And I can't, for the life of me, understand how these people can sit there and be okay with causing so much strain to another person, other people, that they no longer feel like their life is worth living. That they're so stressed out that they lose a child and be okay with that. And then turn around and have your staff and your friends in the media present you as the victim. And then you engage in years long campaign to smear while gaslighting. Now I'm not into celebrity culture. And before there was a Harry and Meghan, I have been a Meghan fan, but I've never really been a fan of a public figure where I'll get very deep into a stan culture. But here I am. Because I find it absolutely deplorable the way that Harry and Meghan have been treated. So if there's ever two public figures I will root for, it's going to be Harry and Meghan. And not because I think they're perfect. It's not because I always agree with everything that they do and say, because that's not the case. But the way that they have been treated is so deplorable. And underneath it all, I'm not a monarchist, so I don't care about titles, but I feel like they're genuinely good people trying to do some good in this world. And that, that I fully support. The two people that were dedicated to find out what color Megan's child actually was, both get hit at the same time. You can't make this shit up. Yes, Kate wasn't the one that was out there in the blogs making the report, but baby, she sure wasn't shutting them up either. She sure was making her sly comments, doing everything she can to undermine Megan Mark because she was jealous that a beautiful black woman was in the house standing right next to you and probably doing better than you. There was such an uproar, such a discourse on how a black woman could be a part of the palace, could be a part of the royal. They had so much disdain and so much hate for a woman that didn't do anything but love one of the members of their family, that they did everything they can possible to emotionally break her, to contribute to the fact of why she left England and contribute to the reason why Harry and Meghan no longer wanted to be a part of the royal family. They don't even accept funds from y'all. So when you guys were both diagnosed, 
I don't know, months in between. I can see that being karma. Now, do I wish upon either of these people? No. Am I wishing for a swift recovery? Yes. But can I say at the same time, I feel like it's karma? You damn rootin' too, not sure what. And if you don't like it, go pray. Now, I remember seeing articles stating that Prince William will be returning to his duties as a work from home royal. I'm not even gonna get into that. But when I saw Harry and Meghan doing the polo, <laughs> Uh, recording the upcoming series and getting good press globally in the UK it's always going to be negative so that doesn't count I figured that we'd see William pop up because I have noticed that whenever Harry and Meghan are out and about and are getting good press so we we're talking about when Harry made his trip to was it Singapore or when they're doing Invictus Games even in Canada or the games itself Whenever they're out and about for a couple of days and they're getting consistently good press, William and Kate will pop up. And now Kate is out of commission for now. So I expected to see William and I was right. And not only was I right in assuming that we will soon see William, even though he said that he'll be working from home, that we will see him in the same frame as a black or brown person. <laughs> I was right because again once you take note of the patterns of the PR strategies of the palace it's very easy to spot it what's interesting to me is that I have seen commentary from content creators who heavily focus on pop culture in general and are not necessarily royal watchers peeping that and this is why I feel like Kensington Palace and the palace in general is not winning the PR war outside of the royal bubble. And some of the photos of the fellow that he's doing this engagement with were hilarious because that man looked so <laughs> over it. <laughs> and some of the photos of the fellow who was doing the engagement with him reminded me of other photos that I have seen where black and brown folks are used for PR and perhaps they can tell because their faces, their faces said it all. Anybody else notice how when the royal family is coming out of a scandal, within I would say one to two weeks, there is a photo op of them with a person of color, almost always a service worker, as if to say, how could I not be trustworthy? I almost touched a poor today. The problem is the strategy is so tired it's not even working on the people in the photo op. His brother's like, when will shut? About to go order some American Riviera Orchard jam because he's mad about what y'all did to Megan. Don't get me wrong, I love to see a colonizer fail in a public place. Y'all should we look on his face because he is all of us. Oh dear, have you seen this? <laughs> Prince William is going to return to work as a work from home royal. <laughs> What's he going to do? Wave to himself. All they do each month is go out to a few events to keep themselves visible, cutting ribbons and shaking hands. <laughs> this has got to be the biggest piss take. But he can go to a football match with his son, plus another son, a budding rose offshoot. And apparently he met his mother-in-law in the pub. Nice to see where his benefits are going. Who's going to be checking up on him? Oh, there's no need. He's got no official engagements booked for the next year. So he's working from home. He's going to be doing nothing. All the royals have to do is show up so that the plebs can fawn all over them. If they don't do that, then what's the point of them? Reading things like this, quite frankly, makes me want to literally vomit onto this table. It's when are we going to wake up and say no? Prince William was off for four weeks at Easter. Most working people get four weeks off a year. During that time, he took £2 million from the existing royal funding routes. This, quite frankly, if you're watching this and you don't think this is absolutely disgusting, that the guy takes nearly £24 million a year from funding routes. If you don't think that's disgusting, I think there's probably something wrong with you, to be honest. Yesterday, the guy visited two charity-based, food-based initiatives. 
two hours work, both within an hour drive of his house. He took some items from his personal kitchen. This guy has enough money to, to basically fund those two businesses every single year for the rest of his life. How do you think the volunteers and the minimum wage people that staff those establishments thought about this guy coming in, chopping up some carrots, being lauded by the press and then buggering off? How do you think they felt when they're probably on 18 to 23,000 pounds a year, the same as this guy gets paid, let me do the maths, the same as this guy gets paid in three and a half hours? Even when he's asleep, he's getting paid minimum wage in three and a half hours. A yearly minimum wage in three and a half hours. Let that sink in. I am bloody furious with this stuff today. Honestly, I'm... Is it time to join Republic? Is it time for demonstrations, protests, marching on Downing Street? I don't know why. Y'all be funny as hell on Meghan Markle's internet. <laughs> because y'all swear that this woman has to decide if she's black or white. <laughs> Mother Markle has never denied being biracial. I know, I know. It's hard for y'all to believe. She's never denied being biracial. Y'all like to sit here and say, oh, she said she was a white woman on her driver's license. <laughs> no, she didn't. Y'all, she said she was a white woman on her passport. No, she didn't. <laughs> she put white down on her acting resumes. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. See, y'all can't stand the fact that she's biracial. So you try to make it say, seem as though she's only accepted her white side. That woman has never, ever sat there and said, I'm only white or I'm only black. She's always claimed to be biracial. She's never denied her mother. She's never denied her father. Okay? Contrary to your popular belief, she's never denied either side to her. Okay? That woman went so far as to when she was on suits as making sure that her father was black because she's a biracial woman. Her character is a biracial woman. Meghan Markle, AKA Mother Sussex, AKA Mother of Success, knows that she is fair toned, know that she could be white passing. She talks about this and the struggles that some of biracial light-skinned women have or bi biracial light-skinned children have with uh, Mariah Carey on her podcast. You know, a lot of you haters have probably listened to it. So go back and listen to it again. But then I forget, you guys' minds are warped into hating everything she does. So you purposefully do not understand where she comes from. But that woman has never denied her heritage, whether it be black, white, whatever. Okay? Get over it. Have a good day. This is a message to all the haters out there. If you don't like what I do, but you watch everything I'm doing, you're still a fan. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.